Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, we bless God for yesterday's broadcast and, and for the miracles and healings that took place yesterday. Hey, if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, I think you should go watch it because there's something in there for you. And like I've always told you, don't just watch, share. Share with everyone in your contact. Let them get blessed to praise God. And you'll be a partner when you do that. Partners are not just those who contribute financially to what we are doing. Even those who help us take our message, physically, I mean, deliberately take our message out to reach even one person that we cannot help You are a partner. And we pray for you every every day that the spirit of god will remember you and do good things in your life so for those of you that do it thank you god richly bless you praise god before going to today's broadcast can we call for that daily bread i want you to release your faith as we do this because something is surely going to happen today Praise God. All right, so join me right now as we make this request. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about God loves you. What a topic. And to let your heart settle on this truth. To let your mind stay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, he says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on God. God takes that responsibility to keep such a one in perfect peace to understand that god loves you and i showed you yesterday what god did you know now we, we read from john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so we've talked about that well yesterday i showed you it says the greatest measure of love that god displayed to us is to make us his children Put his surname, put his name as our surname. Praise God. Oh, yes, that's exactly what he did. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And I love what he says in the next verse, verse 2, 1 John chapter 3. He says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God of God. Not sometime in the future. Not when we die. You know this whole idea people have you know, when we die we go to heaven and then we enjoy all the things we're not able to enjoy on earth. That's a big lie. I mean big big lie. Praise God. When you die you are dead. Shot as a prisoner to the one who's called the spirit of death. Now, I've said this many times on this broadcast, but until you catch it, I'll keep saying it. Death is not your transportation to God. Death is an enemy of God. You cannot, God cannot convey you with a vehicle of his enemy to his house. Come on, think about it. Sending a terrorist to go and pick up your child in school and bringing that child home, isn't that a risk for you? When people die, now this is the truth the church needs to say. You know, there are many lies we have told ourselves for many years and we have believed. And because they, they made us feel good. But hey, truth is truth. Death is an enemy of God. And death is a spirit. And that spirit has always be, been contending with the authority of God. Now, Jesus came and he defeated death. He did. 
So if Jesus defeated death, why are we still dying? I'll tell you why we're still dying. Unbelief. Unbelief. He said, no, but, 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 but we believe. Hey, you don't believe. Believe what? Now, when we say believe, see, this is the problem. When we say believe, say, but I believe in Jesus. What about Jesus do you believe? No, sincerely, what about Jesus do you believe? I believe he died and he... Now, now believing that Jesus died and then he rose from the dead. Now, because the way the scripture is written and then the way it has been taught, we follow those lines of thinking. For example... How does someone get saved? You know, we're quick to say, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with thy heart that God raised him from there, thou shalt be saved. So, does that mean, now it's written that way. Now remember, it's not God that said it. <laughs> remember, it's not God that said it. It's Apostle Paul that said it. Now Apostle Paul was preaching to the Roman, to the Roman, um, to the Jew, Roman Jews. You know, he was speaking to the Jews in Rome. So then, he now, Put that in. Hey, cool, my I, I pray God gives you understanding. So now we take that statement like we do others and say the only way to get saved is to confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from there. So we bring people out for the altar and say, Say after me, I confess with my mouth, I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart. And I believe in my, that God raised him from the dead. That God raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. Amen. Now you are saved. How? Now that's why you have lots of people who have gone to altar call many times. And yet they will still go. Because they've, they've, they leave that altar call not feeling saved at all. Then they are having challenges with the life they live. And someone says, no, no, it's, it's unbelief that you're, you're still struggling. No, you just have to believe that God has saved. You just have, brothers and sisters, if God saves you, you will know you are saved. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You don't struggle for salvation. You only receive salvation. And when you receive, now for you to receive salvation, it has to be given to you. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So it's not the same. It's not the same after the preacher that gets you saved. And then, now because we don't understand that truth, we now begin to introduce some kind of logic in, in church. So we have lots of people in church who are not living the life, but then they are still in church. And then we begin to say, you, you, you've heard statements like the church is like a hospital. You have all manner of people in it. That's one of the biggest lies that I've ever been told. I'm serious, the biggest lie that I've ever been told. The church of Jesus Christ, is the place where Jesus reigns as king. It's not that building that you go to on Sunday. The church of Jesus Christ is the place where Jesus reigns as king. And everyone in that church, every member of that church have their eyes and their gaze fixed on him. Why fixed on him? Is he just sitting high up there and say, everybody bow to me? No, sir. We see him as the perfection of the Godhead. We, we see him. And what do we see in him? We see in him who we are. Now God, aye, God sets him up that we may look at him and then understand who we are. I hear what I'm saying. So we look at this one and then there's something important about the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ, the life wire of the church of Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. 
Now, if the Holy Spirit is not working in your life, if the Holy Spirit is not active in your life, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry to tell you this truth. You are not part of the church. You are not. There's no two ways about it. You are not. Because everything comes from God and is transmitted or transferred through the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing gets to you. So if the Holy Spirit is not at work in your life, how then do you say you're connected to God? What, what, how, what kind of salvation did you receive? You didn't receive salvation. You find people arguing, eh, must, must, must I speak in tongues or must I not speak in tongues? Those are business arguments. The question you ask yourself is, is the Holy Spirit active in you? Is he active in you? You can choose whether you want to speak in tongues or not. But is the Holy Spirit active? Can you say the Holy Spirit is active in you? Can you say? Now remember the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many. Now he told us, behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the sons of God. So God has adopted us into sonship. Then he comes again, the same Paul now said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Uh-huh. So now, hey, you take that statement. You take that statement and then you begin to analyze it. So, if one is not led by the Spirit of God, is it a son of God? No, he's not. He is not. The seal of sonship is the Holy Spirit. Yes, the seal of sonship is the Holy Spirit. Now, when I mean sonship, I know there are teachings that describe child, baby, sons, and then now, now I'm talking about children. The seal of being a child of God is the Holy Spirit. So if God doesn't stamp that seal of His Spirit in your life, sorry to tell you this, you don't belong to him. You can lay claim that you're a child of God. You remember John the Baptist. When, when John, when God was talking to John about Jesus. Now, for, for, funny enough, you know, Jesus was his cousin. So God is talking about Jesus to John. And God told him, hey, you will see him. Among everybody who's coming to be baptized, you will see one who you will see my spirit resting on him. Now, many people have used that to think that when Jesus went to be baptized of John was when the Holy Spirit came on Jesus. Of course, you know, that's not true. Praise God. You know, a simple thought. The one who was a forerunner, that's John the Baptist. The Bible says John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. See that now? And then now he the John that was to forerun Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. When do you think Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost? He was <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Mary was told that the Spirit of God will overshadow you and something will be implanted into you. Now, if the Spirit of God overshadowed and planted something inside, what do you think he planted? Didn't he plant himself? Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, really, are you getting what I'm saying? So it's not that John saw the Holy Spirit came and descended on Jesus. No, no. Now, why am I sharing this with you? God told John, the way you will know that that's my son is coming to you, you will see the Holy Spirit in his life. You will see the evidence of the Holy Spirit in him. So John was baptizing and then suddenly he looked up and he saw this, his cousin coming. And then he, he, he saw the Spirit of God on him. 
Now, because John had the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. John had the Holy Spirit. Now, it was so easy for him to identify the Holy Spirit in Jesus. He didn't see a dove coming to rest on Jesus like the movies have made us to believe. <laughs> Praise God. No. And nobody else saw any dove. Only John saw the sign that God gave to him. <laughs> now, because John was filled with hope, it was easy for him to identify. Now, here's the point. Now, when you are a child of God, the way you identify another child of God is simply the same thing that is working in you is working in them. Now, because we don't state these things out clear, we have opened our gathering. Take note of that word. Our gathering to all kinds of people. Yes, we have a desire to save everybody. But you don't call that gathering the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't call it the church. And people who are not, who do, who do not have the Holy Spirit in them, they are not members of the church. So if you have a gathering that you have more people in it that are not led by the Spirit of God, number one, how did they even come to that gathering? Did they come just because of the music? Did they come just because of uh, the, the dressing of the, the choir or the church, the pastor? Did they come just, just what brought them? Now, I know God can bring people in different ways, but what keeps them if it is not the Holy Spirit? Now, if the Holy Spirit calls you, whatever means He calls you by, when you get there, if you don't identify the one who calls you, you can't stay in Him. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can hear any voice. You can respond to any voice. But if you don't identify that, now I know that it is the Holy Spirit that I've been calling me. You won't stay with that voice. Just like Samuel. Eli had to teach him to identify that voice. It is when he acknowledged and responded to that voice that the Holy Spirit began to talk to him. God began to talk to him. I'm sharing this with you because it's so important. If you want to come into the vitality of the love of God, not just knowing that God loves you, but leaving out the love of God. Brothers and sisters, there is no other way but being one whom the Holy Spirit is actively working in you. My time is up. <laughs> it's God. Please take note of this. Meditate on this. Think on this. And may the Lord visit you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.